The year 2014 ushered in the most significant rule changes in F1 history. With normally aspirated 2.4-liter V8 engines replaced by new 1.6-liter turbocharged V6 power units integrated with complex hybrid energy recovery systems, ERS, that the FIA claimed gave the sport a much cleaner and greener image. This was the turbo hybrid era, the era of Mercedes dominance. Every three to five years, the FIA introduces extreme aerodynamic or engine changes that naturally changes the nature of cars. Not every constructor is capable of interpreting and perfectly implementing these rule changes. During the turbo hybrid era, Mercedes proved to have had the best interpretation of the rules and thereby had the fastest car on track. 2021 marked the end of the turbo hybrid era with the FEA announcing new rules for the 2022 F1 season. Like always, there are winners and losers in every competition. Mercedes proved to be the biggest loser during the 2022 F1 season regarding their interpretation of the then new 2022 F1 rules, while their arch rival Red Bull Racing were the winners, not forgetting Ferrari which finished in front of Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship in second place behind Red Bull, something that was never possible during the turbo hybrid era. The hypothesis we are trying to bring forth here is that these FIA rules can either make or break teams. In this episode, we will carefully break down the new FIA rule changes for the 2023 Formula One season and how each rule may affect the teams. Here is the first rule change, ride height and diffusers adjusted. With some teams encountering poor poising upon the arrival of F1's new spec cars last year, which featured ground effect aerodynamics, a set of floor based flexibility, and monitoring measures, a ride for the second half of the 2022 season, and more have been outlined for 2023, such as the floor edges have been raised by 15 millimeters, the diffuser throat height has been raised, the diffuser edge stiffness has been increased, and you may be wondering what a diffuser is. The key role of the diffuser on a modern race car is to accelerate the flow of air into the car, creating an area of low pressure, thus increasing downforce. Another additional sensor has been mandated to effectively monitor the poor poising phenomenon. The purpose of these adjustments is to make significant poor poising a thing of the past. Number 2. Stronger roll hoops after Zhao Guanyu's crash. The FEA have confirmed that the design of roll hoops on Formula One cars will be changed in a bid to avoid similar accidents to the one experienced by Zhou Guanyu at Silverstone. Alfa Romeo driver Zhou Guanyu survived a frightening accident at the start of the British Grand Prix during the 2022 F1 season, when he was pitched upside down by contact with his helmet millimeters from the track before his car dug into a gravel trap and rolled. Despite his roll hoop breaking off his car after his half roll, Alfa Romeo later confirmed that his roll hoop had not technically failed, but that the forces placed on the roll hoop in the accident exceeded the threshold they are tested for. From this season, roll hoop designs will be modified, such as featuring a rounded top in a bid to reduce the risk of them digging into the ground in an accident, and a new load test applied on the hoops in a forward direction. The FIA say that roll hoop tests will be overhauled to make them more stringent. For those of you who do not know what a roll hoop is, it provides a critical part of the overall safety cell for the driver, mounted at the top of the chassis behind the driver's head. The roll hoop must support the weight of the car during a rollover accident and protect the driver's head, as in the case of Zhao's accident. It was evident that an update to the requirements for the roll hoops was needed after the crash of Zhou Guanyu at Silverstone, said FIA President Mohammed Ben Sulaim. While this incident showed us all how remarkable the safety systems in Formula One are, it also proved once again that we must continue to innovate and pursue safety matters without compromise. Number 3. A reduction in the minimum car weight. Aerodynamic development will make the biggest difference, as power unit development is frozen until 2026 and all cars are now at the minimum weight limit. The minimum weight value returns to 796 kilograms, that is 2 kilograms less, compared to 2022. Development work over the last year means there will no longer be major problems of excess weight for the teams as there were last season, which led the FIA to raise the minimum value to 798 kilograms. The total weight of the power units will increase by 1 kilogram, 
to a total of 151 kilograms. This increase is dictated by the fact that the total weight of the drive units will also include components that were previously part of the chassis group. Reliability will remain a challenge, as only three power units can be used over the span of the 23 Grand Prix season. The management of petrol temperatures will be less restrictive, as the fuel can be cooled by up to 10 degrees Celsius. If the ambient temperature is lower than 30 degrees Celsius, a relief valve will be installed inside the tank to avoid internal pressures exceeding one bar. Number 4. Revised Mirrors to Improve Driver Visibility In an attempt to increase driver visibility, there will be a change to rear-view mirrors on F1's 2023 spec cars, with the width of the reflective surface increasing by 50 mm from 150 mm to 200 mm. Following tests by Red Bull and Mercedes in Hungary and Belgium respectively last season, the entire grid got involved at the Dutch Grand Prix, and the changes have now been written into the regulations. This will force teams to change the location of their rear-view mirrors in order to accommodate their larger size, and if wrongly placed, may affect the aerodynamics of the car. Number 5. Double the number of sprint events. An exciting development for 2023 sees the number of sprint events doubled from 3 to 6. Azerbaijan Baku, Austria Red Bull Ring, Belgium, spa Francorchamps, Champs, Qatar, Lusail, the United States, Circuit of the Americas, and Sao Paulo and Lagos are the venues chosen, following on from extensive research into their suitability. Meanwhile, sprint accident damage allowance will now be a fixed amount per team for each race weekend that includes a sprint session. The forfeit allowance amount for each sprint will double to $300,000 from 2023 onwards, while all other sprint damage allowances will be removed. F1 Sprint is a 100 kilometers dashed with no mandatory pit stops and drivers racing flat out to the checkered flag. It was first introduced during the 2021 F1 season with only three sprint races. The result of the sprint race determines the grid for the weekend's main event, the Grand Prix on Sunday. Alongside this, park firm rules on sprint weekends are under review for 2023, with the aim of simplifying the setup blocking process. After the FAA cited a significant increase in park firm requests between Friday's qualifying session and Saturday's sprint. We have now come to the end of part one of the new Formula One rules for 2023. Like and subscribe to the channel to be alerted when part two is available.